Hi, this is a Grello and Gray tutorial for the Circa counter. I'm Grello and I'll be your teacher for this photo tutorial, the shawl. The problem with shawls and cowls and scarves is that there are so many interesting ones and they're made in so many interesting and different ways. So I can't say, here's how to use the Circa counter to make a shawl. The best I can do is to point out some common techniques used to make shawls and cowls and scarves and see how we can use the Circa counter to make those techniques easier. But first, a little introduction. This is the circuit counter. We named its parts after the parts of a pocket watch. So this is the bow, this is the face, these are the crowns, and these are the hands. The hands fit snugly into the slots on the dial where they're designed to stay put. The crowns rotate about the face. You've got three different colors to work with, so you can keep track of three different counts at the same time. Every count has a starting number and an ending number. You put the crown on the starting number and you put the hand on the ending number. That way you never forget when you're supposed to stop. You advance your counts by clicking the crowns from number to number. I'm going to make three points about shawls today. Here's the first one. At its most basic level, a shawl is a series of increases that take a small thing and turn it into a big thing which is why a shawl seems at first to be going so fast and then by the end each row takes three days. Let's say we wanted to work a basic shawl. One way to do that is to work a few setup rows and then for the body of the shawl work some increases every fourth row until the shawl is as big as we want it. This instruction is embarrassingly easy for the circuit counter. I'm almost embarrassed to use it, but let's. The first thing we do in every pattern is to assign each task a color. We only have one task so far, so I'm going to assign the color yellow to it. What's that task? Keeping track of the four row repeat. I put my yellow hand on the four, because that's my ending number. I put the yellow crown on the one, which is my starting number. After I work every row, I move the yellow crown forward one click. And when the yellow crown lines up with the yellow hand, I work my increases across the row. Just to make it more interesting, let's say the pattern asks us to work a total of 16 increase rows before moving on to a different instruction. Not a problem. We simply assign that task a separate color, let's say gray, and we use that color to keep track of how many increase rows we've done. I put the gray hand on the 16 because that's my ending number. I'm going to work a total of 16 increase rows. I put the gray crown on the 0, which is sharing space with the 36 at the top of the dial. Why? because I haven't completed any increase rows yet. Every time my yellow crown reaches the four and I work my increase row, I've just completed a repeat. So I send the yellow crown back to the one and I move the gray crown forward one click. When the gray crown lines up with the gray hand, I've finished my 16th increase row and it's time to move on to the next stage of the instructions. Should we make it more interesting? Why not? Because, here's the thing, many shawls don't just get bigger, but they also get more beautiful with each passing row because they've got cables or color work or lace. Let's say the same pattern asks us not only to keep increasing, but also, at the same time, to work over and over a lace pattern consisting of 12 rows. How in the world are we supposed to keep track of what pattern row we're on? Wait a minute, the blue crown, we haven't used that one yet. The chart runs from row 1 through row 12 over and over. I put the blue hand on the 12 because that's my ending number. I put the blue crown on the 1, which is my starting number. After I work every row, I move the blue crown forward one click. I can see at a glance what pattern row I'm on, even as I don't forget to keep increasing every fourth row. I've put together a slideshow of the circuit counter as it moves through the pattern chart for the first time. Watch the yellow and gray crowns too. They're keeping track of the increases. Now for my second point. I'm no expert on shawls, but I've noticed that quite a few of them seem to say, do this thing, call it X, 
and then do this other thing, call it y, and go from x to y to x to y until a specific goal is reached, like until you've used all but 25% of your yarn, which is for the border. I like to call this type of instruction the toggle, because you're toggling back and forth between two different sets of instructions. The circuit can help here too. Let's take as our first example the beautiful Lentilla by Martina Baim. I made this for my mother. Brownie points. Unfortunately, I didn't get a very good photo of it before I gave it away. Oh well. The pattern consists of two sets of instructions, one for the flat part and one for the ruffled part. The knitter toggles back and forth between flat part and ruffled part. I'm making this up so as not to reproduce the pattern, but let's say the instruction for the flat part consists of 13 rows and the instruction for the ruffled part consists of 9 rows. This is easy. I assign one color to flat, let's say yellow, and a second color to ruffled, let's say gray. Flat part first. I put the yellow hand on the 13 because that's my ending number. I put the yellow crown on the 1 which is my starting number. Ruffled part second. I put the gray hand on the 9 because that's my ending number. I put the gray crown on the 1, again my starting number. While I'm working the flat part, I use the yellow crown to keep track of the rows from 1 to 13. I put the gray crown on the 0 to remind me that I'm not working the ruffled part right now. Conversely, while I'm working the ruffled part, I use the gray crown to keep track of the rows from 1 to 9. This time I put the yellow crown on the 0 to remind me that I'm not working the flat part right now. At a glance, I know exactly where I am, and I don't have to read the knitting, although of course that's a very important thing to be able to do. I'm working on the beautiful Catkin now, which is a shawl by Karina Spencer that everybody seems to have made but me. The first, striped part, has a toggle too, the stripes. I'm making mine in grello and gray, so this is easy. I use the yellow crown to keep track of the grello stripes, and the gray crown to keep track of the gray stripes. When I'm working a grello stripe, I keep the gray crown on the zero. Conversely, when I'm working a gray stripe, I keep the grello crown on the zero, or yellow. This helps me see, at a glance, what row of which stripe I'm working. I don't have to go to the knitting and count rows. Now, this wouldn't be a big deal with these stripes because they're not very wide. If they were any wider, though, I'd have to do some counting before I knew where I was, and I hate that because it interrupts the flow of the knitting. With the circuit counter, it doesn't matter how wide the stripes are. The circuit counter keeps track for me. Back to Catkin. I'm knitting away, toggling between my stripes, but at the same time, I'm supposed to do something important every so often. The instructions say how many rows to work between each important something. So making this up again, let's say I have an important something to do on rows 28 and 54. Now that I have my circuit counter, I rarely care what row I'm on, as with an ordinary row counter, and I don't care this time either, even though the pattern is written in row language. Why don't I care? Because I don't have to. Here's how I do it. I use the blue crown to keep track of the important somethings. For the first one, I put the blue hand on the 28. I advance the blue crown one click after every row, and when the blue crown lines up with the blue hand at 28, I know it's time to do an important something. Now the second important something happens on row 54. Oh no! The circuit counter stops at 36! No problem, I just go around again. Count with me. 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, there it is. Check your work. What's 54 minus 36? It's 18. So I put the blue hand on the 18. I advance the blue crown one click after every row, and when the blue crown lines up with the blue hand at 18, I know it's time to do the second important something. Now you're probably thinking, why don't you just use an ordinary row counter for this instruction? I mean, the designer is counting rows, why can't you? And the answer is, I could, but I'd rather keep all of my counts in one place, and I'm not talking pencil and paper here. The circuit counter was designed to count multiple things, put it to work. Besides, it's not as if the row number really matters. There's nothing magic about row 54. What matters is that you work the right number of rows between the important somethings. And I'm doing that. I'm also doing it in a way that's uniquely visual. I can see at a glance where I am with my stripes and how much knitting there is between the row I'm on and the next important something. Plus, I find it very pleasing. Is that weird? After every grello row, I give the yellow and blue crowns a click. After every gray row, I give the gray and blue crowns a click. When the yellow crown lines up with the yellow hand, I'm on the last row of my grello stripe. 
when the gray crown lines up with the gray hand, I'm on the last row of my gray stripe. And when the blue crown lines up with the blue hand, it's time to do an important something. I don't have to look at the pattern once. Now for my third point. Shawls are creative, so don't be afraid to be creative when you're using the circuit counter to work your shawl or your cowl or your scarf. Example, counting backward. When we designed the counter, we chose a mechanism that knitters can rotate both ways, clockwise and counterclockwise. So you can count the regular way, or you can count backward. When might you want to count backward, you ask? Well, Gray did it when she worked the lovely Song of the Sea by Louise Zass Bangham. And then she, Gray that is, blogged about it on our website, so you can read about it there. As you can see from the photo, the scarf has three stages, big motifs, medium motifs, and small motifs. Gray assigned the first color to these stages, let's say yellow, and she ran the yellow crown from the one to the three. Each stage, in turn, had a certain number of pattern repeats, making up a number, let's say four, to which Gray assigned the second color, gray. Finally, and this is the most interesting part, the pattern that got repeated four times was a chart. Making up a number, let's say the chart was seven stitches wide and seven rows high. On the first row of the chart, the instructions said to do something, let's call it S, to every seventh stitch out of seven. On the second row, the pattern said to do S on every sixth stitch out of seven. On the third row, the pattern said to do S on every fifth stitch out of seven, and so on. Now, it's a pain to say to yourself, okay, I'm on the third row, so I do S to the, wait a minute, check the pattern, okay, the fifth stitch. The row number doesn't match the number of the stitch you're focusing on, which makes it not intuitive, which in turn means it's just a mistake waiting to happen. So why not count backward from seven to one? And that's what Gray did. She put the blue hand on the seven to remind her that the chart was seven rows long, and then she put the blue crown on the seven as well. Why? Because that was her starting number, counting backward from the seven to the one every time. That way, when she was working the third row of the chart, see that three on the right side? The blue crown was on the five, and where's the S? On the fifth stitch. Which meant that if she put her knitting down and came back to it later, she knew exactly when to work the S. If the blue crown was on the three, for example, she worked an S on the third stitch out of seven. Why out of seven? Because the blue hand was on the seven. The circuit counter takes all of these instructions and puts them in the palm of your hand, literally. Look here, the yellow crown is on the two, so we're on the second stage of the cowl, the medium motifs. The gray crown is on the one, so we're on the first repeat of the chart. And the blue crown is on the four, so we're on the chart row in which we do S to the fourth stitch out of every seven. We're biased, but we think this little gadget is pretty powerful. So don't be afraid to be creative in using your circuit counter. Make it work for you. We hope you enjoyed this photo tutorial. If you have any questions, please contact us on our website. I'm Grello, and on behalf of Gray, thanks for watching.